Hi everybody, welcome to day three of our Keanu Backpack Sew Along. Today we'll be making the front and we'll be making the back. So by the end of today, it'll start to look like a backpack. The first step is to construct the exterior front panel. So we'll be, we'll be following along with those directions. You'll want to grab your front pocket piece that looks like you know, like a V shape and lay it right side up. And then you put your zipper, your, this is your 18 inch zipper. Make sure you find the middle of your zipper, put it in the middle and pin all the way around. We will be sewing this with an eighth of an inch basting stitch. Keep that zipper foot handy because we will be needing it here shortly. haven't done a zipper before just take it slow make sure your zipper lines right up with your edge of your fabric it's important to keep it as even as you can move those zipper heads out of the way when they get in the way make sure you don't slide them off the end <laughs> going slow here and making sure that that zipper is lined right up with the edge of my fabric. That's why we're doing the basting stitch. and it does kind of bend a little bit that's okay that's what will make the pocket stick out on the front a little bit when we're finished the next step is to lay that back down like that and then we'll take the lining of the front pocket and put that right side down and we sandwich the zipper in the middle so I want to make sure you see this we have the exterior the zipper right side down against the exterior, and then the lining right against that. So we'll pin this all around. I'm gonna pause a moment and pin this, and I'm, we'll switch to my zipper foot, and I'll be right back. Okay, zipper foot's installed, and I have the lining pinned on here. Make sure that your lining lines up at the top right here. You, you want to make sure that these two line up right here. So I usually pin this part and the middle and this part first and then pin everything else after that. So now we will be sewing with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, which is the full seam allowance of the pattern. You should be right up against that zipper so you'll need to watch for those zipper pulls. And again, really try and keep your fabric lined up with your zipper. It's a little dicey in that curve because it doesn't quite want to lay flat sometimes, but try and keep it flat without moving your pins very much.
sewn on there. Now we will pin this, sorry, trim it a little bit. You can trim the curves. So we have these curves and what we'll be doing is turning this inside out. So we can clip these curves a little bit. Don't go very far, obviously, no more than a quarter of an inch. And since we are clipping a zipper, we need to be careful about that. If you have fray check, I would suggest using that on your zipper so that you don't fray your zipper. I looked and looked and I cannot find mine. So I'm gonna be taking my chances here. <laughs> but ideally you would use some fray check on the zipper so that it doesn't fray on you. Okay, so I've clipped a few here, just a couple, and then about five in the middle and four or five up here. So we want to turn this so your lining is in the back and flatten these out. I like to actually pin them. Oops. So that they stay nice and flat right there as I'm pulling this out. And you can pin all around here keep it from fighting you. So your zipper is poking out here. You have a raw edge here and your exterior and your lining on the other side. Now I bet you can guess what the next step is. <laughs> We're gonna go back to our regular foot here and top stitch this with our eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, watching out for those zipper pulls there. sure to pull your fabric away from your zipper so it's not bunched up next to your zipper. and I'm pulling this out so that they, they lay nice and flat. Those little snips that we did should help with that too. Okay. You can go ahead and baste around the whole thing if you'd like. I'm not going to this time, but you can if you want to. Okay, so there you have the bottom. Now the next step is to take your front flap with the fleece and this time we're going to work on the other side of the zipper. So we have to lay your zipper up like this, find your middle, aren't you glad you marked all those middles? Your middle is right here. You lay them together. I keep throwing my clips today. And then clip this all around. And it will assume the shape of that front flap there. It's kind of like magic. You do want to try and make this one this edge match up with these edges. So the edge of your front flap should be right where 
the edge of this is. Okay. So that you have the same amount of coverage on each side of that zipper. So you can see how they match up. Maybe the angle is poor. But matches up on the other side here. So I'll clip it there. And then it works best to ease in the rest. It should be pretty close anyways. Okay, on the other side. So we have it all clipped. It does look a little funny, right? But you can see what it will look like in the end. The zipper will pop out once we get those clips off there. So let's go ahead and baste that on, again at our eighth of an inch. Keeping that fabric right lined up with the zipper. missed my fabric a little bit there. <laughs> I got the fleece lining, but I did not get the fabric. So I'm going to turn it over so I can see better what I'm doing. I'm going to fix my little hole. There we go. Now it's on there. <laughs> So there's our front. Now we need to do the lining of that one. So we'll turn it back over. And lay it like this so it pops out. And we need to put this. Again, find your middle. Now this one, oh, goodness, again. Now this one kind of does a funny thing when you bend it around. It it folds itself over. So don't don't worry. It does look a little funny. But I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. It kind of puts itself up into the flat part. But it'll be okay. I'm just clipping my lining to the back side of the zipper here on the flap and again making sure that the edges are matched up at the top. You don't want those all wonky up there when you are going to sew on your top front, front top I guess the piece is called. Okay. 
Okay, so you can see it, it looks a little funny. It, all the bag is hanging here and it looks like it has a hat on. But it'll work out when we turn it right side out. So this is your exterior pieces and then we've clipped our lining pieces. I bet you can guess what we're doing now. Now we're switching back to our zipper foot. And we will be sewing that on with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. It definitely helps to have the ones that are already basted on so that you only have to worry about one at a time. So we're only worrying about this lining piece matching up with our zipper rather than also worrying about our exterior side. The exterior side is already on, we know it already looks good, no worries there. Now our mushroom guy here. We'll turn it right side out. Okay. There we go. We have the front. We have installed a zipper. Look at you, you've installed a zipper. Okay, next thing we need to top stitch this. So I'll switch back to my regular foot real quick. And we'll obviously top stitch with eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, pull your zipper away from your fabric so that you can keep your top stitching all even. doing a couple of pleats at the bottom here just like we did on our side pockets so you need to find your middle you can do a little snip in the middle no more than an eighth of an inch little snip and we will measure one inch one inch this time rather than three quarters we'll measure one inch I'm going to measure it against my mat down here. So my thumb right here is at one inch and the middle. So we'll put this back where they meet. It makes a hump and push out toward your edge and then clip that. Do the same thing on this side. Measure it an inch, push it back to meet. You get a hump, push your hump out toward the outer edge. It's a good way to remember it, to push it out toward the outer edge. So now you have this pleat here that will help create a lot of depth and space in your new pocket. And we will base this. You can do an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch. It doesn't matter here. I like to go 
over it a couple of times just to make sure we got it. And that's what it'll look like. There you go. Now the next piece you'll need is your front bottom. It, it kind of looks like your mane except it's cut off at the top. So it's your front bottom. And you'll lay that down and then lay your front on top. And it should match up. The edges should match up now that we've done our pleat. Okay, and we'll sew around this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance just to baste it on so that it's good to go for when we do our final construction. So I'll use a quarter of an inch seam allowance here. Also make sure that your foam is on your front bottom before you do this. You should have foam basted to it also. back on. Okay. Now our last step for the front. There's only one more step. Can you believe it? We'll take our front top piece looks like this and it will go on right here. So we will put this right sides together. It also has foam on the back. And it should match up. Pin it on each side and you can work in the rest if you need to. This one gets kind of thick, so if you need to cut some foam out, you can. My machine sometimes struggles with this one, so I'll probably hand crank at least over the zipper here because sometimes it likes to yell at me on this one. So we'll be sewing this on with the full 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'll hand crank over that zipper. It just doesn't like me very much. two needles on this seam. <laughs> Not today, but on other backpacks. Okay, and we made it through successfully. Now we will top stitch this one. Eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you need to cut that foam out, go ahead and trim it down. Make 
make sure your seam is pointing this way and your top is pointing this way as you're top stitching. So that's the front. Look at that. Can you open this up? And it has the pocket down in here. You've made a whole pocket today. Good work. Now the back doesn't take nearly as long. So stick with me. We need our back main piece here. We also will need our strap support that we made. this and we'll need our two straps and our two strap anchors. So keep all those pieces handy. We need to measure on our back piece. We'll measure down four and three eighths inches from the top edge. So I like to use my my ruler like this for doing that. Let me move the machine out of the way so you can see. Okay, so I lay it down on the mat and make sure that it's straight with one of the lines. It should be straight on each side with one of the lines. And then I take my ruler and measure down, let's see, four and three eighths inches. Okay, and I have a marker here. Four and three eighths. And then I do it this way so that I can make sure the lines on the ruler are lined up with the lines on the mat. That way I get a straight line. So I can mark my line right here. So four and three eighths and then three and a half. Okay, so you should have one at four and three eighths and one at three and a half. Now, we'll need to take our straps and line those up along your bottom line. Use your middle guide to line up your strap. Make sure you have them oriented like this where they're pointing out and they should meet right in the middle on your four and three eighths inch line okay okay so we're back at the machine again and i have my straps here i've pinned them with these big ones i find that it helps keep them in place while i'm trying to sew them on so you want to sew your straps three or four times back and forth within that inch this inch and a half here. You can sew them back and forth to keep them in place. I don't like to go right on top of the next line. I like to move over a little bit. I'm gonna go across one more time. straps will not be moving. <laughs> the next part is we need to do our strap support piece. So on this one you have your decoville on the back and you can use some double-sided tape to keep this down but I like to just top stitch it and then I'll top stitch right over my when I put it on the backpack I'll top stitch right over what I've already done so I'm gonna fold this bottom piece in and then this corner and angle it in a little bit so you don't get any frayed threads sticking out and then I'll sew and tuck as I go 
I'm just going to do an eighth of an inch seam allowance here just to top stitch this. And I'll tuck these in before I get there. Probably your next two or three, two or three little pieces here. And then you want to do that pivot thing that we talked about where you put your needle down, foot up, and turn. And then keep tucking your next piece in as you go. You could do this from the other side, I guess that would probably be easier. <laughs> So we've made it around the whole thing. You can see it's top stitched here. Okay, so I've made a mistake here. And these straps are supposed to be along the top line, the three and a half inch line, not the four and three eighths. So I'm sorry if I've steered you wrong. <laughs> but put your straps on the four and three eighths inch line. Sorry, put your straps along the three and a half inch line not the four and three eighths. This will be centered along the four and three eighths inch, but I've done it incorrectly. So I'm just gonna scooch it down a little bit and make sure that it's nice and straight to go over those straps. So you can use your big clips again. And you'll put your strap support piece over your straps. And then you'll want to sew along your basting line again and then inside that line. So you should have two lines of stitching along this one. See what that looks like. I just sewed right along my basting line there. And then I'll go a quarter of an inch in. Makes it look really nice actually to do a second line.
two lines of stitching all the way around. Just one more quick step for today. We will put those strap anchors on. So you'll measure up from the bottom one and a quarter inches. I can do it here on my, on my mat. One and a quarter inches and the strap. Okay, so I measured up from the bottom one and a quarter inches and I stuck the bottom of this strap anchor at the one and a quarter inches and pinned it up. So we'll baste those on at a quarter inch seam allowance. You have to do both sides, obviously. So I'll measure up one and a quarter inches on this side. And place my anchor. You want them angled toward the inside of the back. So it'll make an X on the inside. See there? Okay, so let's baste those in place. back you have your straps attached you have your strap anchors attached and you have your front so go ahead and post a picture of those two items on today's thread in the Facebook group I will see you tomorrow bye bye